So I get home from work and I was ready to make a video about the Joey Lucchese trade for the Mets and how it was a good move by the general manager Jared Porter. But then all of a sudden go on Twitter to find out that New York Mets general manager Jared Porter sent explicit photos including naked pictures to a foreign female reporter in 2016 and sent her a bunch of other messages that she ignored. This came from Jeff Passan from ESPN and it was just like, oh my gosh. What the heck is going on? How did this happen? Why did this happen? And why is this guy still the general manager of the New York Mets? In this video, I'm going to rage and rant about this story and just how frustrated I am with Jared Porter and the fact that the Mets have not fired him yet because I just don't understand why you would even keep this guy in the organization because if you do, if, if let's just say the Mets say, oh, Jared Porter apologized, we're going to let him, you know, keep being the general manager. People will have a bad perspective on the Mets and what the organization stands for. And I know personally as a Mets fan, I'm not proud to be a fan of a team that has a general manager that's a complete creep like this. And you know what? This reporter wanted nothing to do with this guy. He kept sending text messages and annoying her. And it was just disgusting. So, you know what? I mean, let, let me know what you guys think in the comment section about this Jared Porter story, about the Lucchese trade and what it means for the Mets rotation, which I think is a really good move. And I'm excited that they did. So we'll get to that later. And make sure to subscribe. We hit 900 subscribers. So we're working our way towards 1,000. That's the big goal. Appreciate it when you guys press subscribe. I love to talk to you guys in the comment section. So let's talk about uh, Jared Porter. I mean, this is just so disappointing because I'm telling you right now, I think that Porter might have had something to do with the Lucchese trade because in his press conferences, in his interviews, he would say, we want to have pitching depth. He would say, we have to evaluate all pockets of the market. We have to look at, you know, not only the big time stars, but guys in the minor leagues, guys international, guys that, you know, aren't talked about much. And Lucchese, he was a perfect example. After the Padres got Joe Musgrove and they already have you Darvish and Blake Snell and Danielson Lamette and Chris Paddock and Mackenzie Gore and Mike Clevenger coming back next year, Lucchese had no room in the Padres rotation. So the Mets are like, all right, we'll take him. The Mets gave the Pirates a prospect, Andy Rodriguez. He was the number 14th ranked prospect in the Mets organization. He was pretty intriguing. A guy that did some catcher and center field. How many players can play both of those positions? Those are like complete opposites. So someone like that has a lot of intrigue. And in the very lower levels in minor leagues, I mean, this guy is only 20 years old. He hit close to 300. Not a lot of power, but still, he was a really intriguing prospect. And, you know, he was ranked number 14, but the Mets did need rotation depth. I mean, there was no question about it because even if the Mets signed, you know, George Springer or Brad Hand or whatever, if you said, all right, well, what else do you think the Mets should do? I would say get more rotation depth, get more of your starting pitchers. And what's really good about Lucchese is that he's a guy that he's still very young and he's going to be under team control for a few more years and he also has minor league options. Lucchese is exactly what the Mets were looking for as far as starting pitching depth goes because number one, it's a low cost. He's not making a lot of money this year and we know how much the Mets are trying to avoid the luxury tax so he does not affect that at all. Number two, he gives Steven Matz a push. Lucchese is a guy that's not going to come here with a big ego, nothing guaranteed, but what he's going to do is he's going to push Steven Matz. As if Matz didn't need enough motivation being that this is the last of his deal and his last chance to actually get a pretty decent payday in free agency if he were to have a good year. Now he has to worry about even having a chance to pitch. In case Lucchese outperforms him in spring training, he could take Steven Matz's job. So this could be a fifth starter for the Mets. And what I also like is it's a depth piece. So in case there's a double header, in case someone is scratched from a start, in case someone is out for two weeks, in case someone is sick, you can have Lucchese make the start. And it's much better to have him make a start compared to Corey Oswald and Walker Lockett and Chris Flexen and you know, all these other the pitchers that the Mets have used, Ariel Harado, all these guys have no business making starts on the major league level. Lucchese is much more capable. He had a bad year in 2020. Don't get me wrong. He only made three starts, but the previous two years, he had an ERA just a little above four. I mean, don't forget the Mets also signed Jared Eikhoff. The Mets also signed Sam McWilliams. So the Mets have options. Like they're doing a good job of building up that triple A to having these guys that are capable players that could step in at any given time. And a 162 game season, especially if there's going to be players getting sick, that is going be very very crucial so I really like this move for the Mets I'm not crazy about the prospect they gave up but I mean was he gonna have much of an impact with the Mets we don't know it was still gonna be a few years before we even knew if this guy was any good and what kind of role he would have on this team I imagine that Alvarez should be the catcher and pre Armstrong should be the center fielder so would he be a utility guy maybe although it's good to see the Mets get some more pitching depth without spending a lot of money which still means that they have plenty of money to give to George Springer or Brad Hand so they're still in the running for Springer he can make his decision this week 
week, and it's between the Mets and the Blue Jays. Mets have a good shot at him, so we'll see what happens there. We'll see what happens with Jared Porter. Mets have to fire Jared Porter. Come on, Cohen. Come on, Sandy. Fire this guy. You can't be sending noodle picks. Hey, guy's got to go. I just don't want him anywhere near the Mets, nowhere near the organization. So the Mets have got to really just say, you know what? No, nothing to apologize for. Just get rid of him. Go, go be creepy somewhere else and just leave us alone. That's the way I would handle it. I don't want guys with this very suspect background in my organization. It's just really creepy and just flat out wrong. Until the next one, be safe, be smarter than Jared Porter, be healthy, and let's go Mets.